Our guest today in the studio is Mr. Mark Courier. He is a candidate for District 3 Supervisor, one of six, and uh, I think you are the sixth now. I don't mean to be leaving you to the end, but it just kind of worked out that way, so um, lucky you. Uh, closer to the election, the longer you're going to stick in their heads, so that's a good thing. <laughs> It is a good thing. Having been on the radio two days ago, too, also, and yeah, oh, good, you're getting the play. in the paper and Excellent. whatnot. We're doing the uh, the final thrust at the right time. Very good, so. very good. That's that's the the key to winning a campaign. Absolutely. I all thought right. honesty and and agendas were the key. Well, timing is is <laughs> crucial too. It's all a big package, I think. <coughs> yes. I'm sorry. I'm, I feel a little warp minded today. So don't mind me. Uh, yeah. So welcome and thank you for joining us. And I'm thank going you. to defer to Peter for the questioning to begin. And um, the phone lines will also be open uh, two six three three four three five. If anybody has any questions for Mark, and I want to ask in advance that you take your questions off the air so we have the maximum amount of time and you keep your questions to the point of the conversation don't call to talk about something that we're not really talking about we just want to keep focus so we can allow mr. courier the maximum amount of time thank you all right thank over you. to Pete the tax guy thank you <coughs> like we do with all our candidates we like to start off with a quick overview of who you are what you are why you're running all that good stuff just like a brief bio yeah. mm -hmm. Great. Uh, I'm running because uh, it entails, that position entails what I've been doing a lot of in this county, and that is uh, trying to improve it and supporting environment, seniors, youth, business. Uh, it's what I do regularly. Uh, as an example, I work very closely with multiple agencies, uh, special districts all the way down to the regional water quality control people. Um, I am diligent in going to meetings. Uh, I was recently at the Upper Lake Ranger Station for a, a subchapter, um, subpart A, travel analysis overview, uh, the management of roads in the forest and single track for motorcycles and whatnot, and how that affects our, uh, what's below that, waterways lake, whatnot. Um, I, you got me excited about wine. I just recently toured the newest wine kiosk, uh, Cash Creek Vineyards, Highway 20, east of the Oaks. Was uh, very impressed. The uh, I think the ladies will be hanging out in that beautiful Italian tile and marble bathroom a lot. I mean, oh, yeah? every step of the way, it's, wow, it's, it's nice. a beautiful, beautiful place. So, uh, and many other things, uh, I'd like to point out that uh, last Wednesday, I received, I think, the best endorsement, uh, and that was uh, Volunteer of the Year Award from Lower Lake High School, signed by the Canocti Unified School District Excellent. Board members. Excellent. So that's, I, I pride myself with that, and I really thank the people involved behind me with that support. That was a wonderful evening. And uh, uh, many things. I, I am supposed to be at the LAFCO meeting at the Clear Lake City Hall right now, mm -hmm. so I'm going to jam over there after this. Uh, and that's a really important thing. It is, very much so. Yep. And the yep. agency formations and where we're going with all these agencies is really right. Matter important. of fact, what, let me just, since we we're going through this. We covering that right now. Cool. Based on the information I provided, I am so far from an expert in this area that I don't even try to voice my opinions or understanding it. But what I've been told is that um, with what's going down is that really there are some um, recommendations or voting going on that's basically going to give, is it the water resource, what's the name of the DWR, Department of Water Resources. Okay, they're overseeing that. And right. basically what's happening is they're basically squashing or eliminating any real true oversight where the whole financial well-being of this agency is strictly by the Board of Supervisors only. Is that true? Uh, yes, there is a thrust in that direction. Also, the, 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 the Agency of Clean Water Protection of the county. That's it, right. And so... What is going on right there, right now, is a better focus on getting the public opinion into that instead of 255 North 4th Street, the courthouse right. uh, <coughs> elements. So working with also getting the 
expert agencies involved as well and their opinions need to be listened to also it's it's the lineage of how all this is set up so we can get the best results mm -hmm. from all these doings right for those listening who really take a sincere interest in this i advise you go down to the clear lake courthouse uh, city hall city hall and pay attention to what's going down because i can't elaborate what a couple of our callers uh, last week mentioned about it, but I know it's a very serious thing, and if you don't want our county government having full control of these resources, you need to get down there. Absolutely. We're, we're also videotaping yes. it, and it'll be made available. Absolutely. Excellent. Yes, so. All right. Um, we just met for the first time a couple of weeks ago. Yes. So I'm really getting to know you. You've done some investigation work. Oh, cool. Not really. Um, <laughs> look at your website. Um, you call yourself the man of the people. Yes. Elaborate. I'd love to. I've worked very closely with people all my life, um, especially in the public sector with uh, risk management, ensuring people's businesses that are their livelihood. And I've always made it a point to meet at their homes, uh, have them come to my home, office, whatever, and do the best for them. And it's a hot tin roof because I'm dealing with the underwriter of the insurance companies all this year. <laughs> and I've been there, done that, I understand. Yes, so you have to make it work in the underwriter's eyes. However, uh, the public is the most important element of this whole picture. So uh, 30 years of doing that and since moving here, I've been very involved in whether it's Kiwanis or 4-H or whatnot. So I love working with people. I love working with kids. And the importance is the ability to be intuitive, clairvoyant, and get people that disagree to agree on a main subject matter or a solution to an issue. So we've been very effective. Uh, the groups I work with, we, we have been very successful, everything we do. Um, like a big feather in my hat is uh, our advisory board, how passionate and dedicated uh, we were to recently uh, renovate our water plant in Spring Valley. And that took at least three years. Uh, and working with the Department of Public Health and our uh, money we had in our coffers from water billing, a special district. Special districts really supported us in the whole matter. And we got the thing done. And Yeah, that's uh, awesome. It really is important to know how to work with people. And if the fur and uh, P&V starts flying, you have to know how to thwart that and keep people focused and going in the right direction. So, And that is definitely a challenge in this area. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so cool. Okay. You got to be good. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, other part of your website, and I'm kind of ad libbing what you wrote. Um, your website states that you wish to bring light manufacturing, warehousing, more agricultural, and small business to afford residents a wider range of employment available and establish a minimum living wage ordinance. This will require more non recreational jobs, more education more social services. I have several questions on that. Mm -hmm. My first one, which is kind of, well, obvious to me, is what do you mean by a minimum living wage ordinance? Uh, that got printed wrong on Fair my enough. flyer. Okay. It, it means living wage. Uh, living wage, this county does not have a living wage ordinance. Half of the counties in the state do. I believe that this county would benefit from preparing an ordinance and making an ordinance supporting living wage. Uh, many businesses I talk to don't like that. Uh, they think that they have to pay their employees more money. Um, I believe it's like hiring a band. If the band's good, you have to pay. And if you have good employees making your business profit, you have to pay commensurate with what they're worth. And so that's part of the uplift, the, the facelift of our economy and giving people more money to spend. Okay. What are you considering a, a, a minimum living wage dollar amount that you would like to see in an ordinance? Well, over the years since living here, 21 years, I've noticed that the county usually goes by what the state says. Or when I was building a home years ago here, they, I asked, where do you get these building codes and whatnot? They said the county of San Diego. And so I, 
I would appreciate if the county looks more to what we need here locally instead of uh, modeling after what the state does or another county does because we know best what's for us, whether it's education or jobs or whatnot. So that's sort of... So do you have a dollar amount involved that you would want to pass? Uh, that would be putting my bullseye on my back if I gave you a dollar yeah, amount on the yeah. radio. Yeah. That's why I asked. Uh, something that works, let's put it that way. We have yeah. a call. Yeah. That must be Scott. Possibly. Hello, you're on the air. Are you still there? I'm sorry, we kept him on too. Long. Okay. So you don't have a dollar amount involved. All you're saying is that you would like to put an ordinance together if you're elected on the board to come up with something that's fair and reasonable for people to have a, a reasonable wage so they can survive in Lake County. Right, I, and have a better life. Uh, I, I have a saying, let's get the most for the best, or let's do the best for the most. And you can't please everyone. So no. Well, you were a small business owner. Yep. I assume you probably had some employees at one point in your yep. insurance agency. Yep. And so you understand the the indirect in, uh, uh, cost involved in increasing wages. Right. Do you really think that small business owners in Lake County can truly afford any type of increases in wages plus the associated payroll taxes and workman's comp? Not unless we uplift the whole economy of the county first. Absolutely. Okay. Things have to be implemented and things have to be changed so the businesses themselves are more profitable in this county. Okay, and how are you going to go about that then? I mean, being a, uh, what I do for a living and having been a business owner myself almost my whole life now, right. I know what I do and how I go about it, but there, I'm a different, I'm quote, unquote, some part of a professional type occupation. Right. If I'm running a hardware store or a, a shoe store or a clothing store, um, I think it's a little bit different scenario on how you market. And so, how do you how do you plan on increasing the viability of small businesses in the county? By making incentives to attract the businesses here, and by doing that, it's it could be a tax incentive. It could be the permitting process. The per permitting process uh, for new businesses coming to this county are at times difficult and uh, much too. Um, Evasive for the, the company to bring a new business here or the existing businesses what they have to deal with so by attracting them it means uh, Technology it means sending uh, uh, What are the what's a good word? Um, uh, they work for the embassy uh, uh, people that go out and promote mm -hmm. the county to attract business ambassadors um, Just below that uh, oh, it's Anyway, you you get very dedicated people that are knowledgeable to go out around the state or even the country, and you see states do ads. California mm -hmm. has our ads. Mm -hmm. uh, come to California <laughs> and whatnot. So we need more of that for our county and to make more of a, a easier way to start a business here and low impact on the environment businesses. And I have a, a saying, make it here, ship it there, or bring recycled uh, products here that need recycling and recycle them uh, and uh, refurbish them and mail them or ship them around the, the world. Because our buying power, I keep repeating, is limited in this county. All of us, uh, 67,000 of us, only have so much money to buy products that are produced here and we need to get them out of the county. I know we have transportation issues, how to get trucks in and out of the county. That's difficult. And uh, there's several businesses that shine at this um, uh, whether it's a kayak company that makes kayaks in the county and ships it uh, to Europe or whatnot and the just a better easier way to get businesses interested in coming here and that means a lot of things to be improved on okay. first so um, I've discussed this with other people including current officials and staff yes and they said there's actually from a county point of view mm -hmm. that there are absolutely no tax incentives they have control over therefore they've never offered tax incentives to anybody what they have done allegedly mm -hmm. is for certain businesses had an expedited permitting process uh Canuck Dye resort is one of the the ones for obvious reasons a good example um, I, is I knew that the glass company, whatever their bottle company that came into Lakeport for a while, they were given specialized or uh, permitting process. Right. So that's already in the works. But mm -hmm. I, again, please correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think there are any tax incentives available at the county level. 
That is a matter of how hard you look and I, how many stones you overturn. Right. And I'm not going to point the finger that they've done excellent or bad at that. I think that the harder you try at something, the better results you'll get in how passionate you are doing that. All right. yeah. One more question, and then we'll get off on a different subject. Yes. Um, we, and I guess, I'm sure our readers are sick and tired of me, uh, readers, viewers, or listeners. Uh, listeners. listeners. Thank you. I tell you, I'm not all here today. <laughs> That's what I'm happens sorry. when you work in multimedia. You <coughs> track know where what I'm media at. we're on. Got a tax yeah. return ready to get to? Oh, we're all, anyway. Um, <laughs> well, at least the cameras are running. <laughs> yeah, on you, not me. Um, <laughs> we've talked about the economic development manager, yes. uh, Mr. Jack Long. Um, very nice gentleman. Mm -hmm. uh, came out of Napa, Sonoma. Mm -hmm. Very much geared towards the wine industry. Yes. And when we interviewed him over a year and a half ago, and I need to get back with him, um, he basically was told by his bosses uh, that he needs to concentrate on developing and marketing Lake County to new businesses. Mm -hmm. And when we talked to him, and it was, it was very straightforward, we have the video, is that it's wine industry, wine industry, and let's do some more wine industry. And I've said this multi way too many times on this show that to the best of my knowledge, and no one's ever proved me wrong yet, that the wine industry here really does not create a tremendous amount of, of employment opportunities. And in addition, all the wine that's produced here is shipped out of county. So really not a lot of dollars and cents stays within this county. If you get elected, what would you do if you were able to to do something different in the promotion and marketing of Lake County and and try to bring in some of the industries that you mentioned in your, on your website? I agree with you on that. We have about 8,000 acres of grapes planted in this county, and it's increasing day by day. I just went by, you know, the Thornhill area on the way here, and yeah. they're, they're, that's they not already <laughs> have that planted. That's, that's not that's Thornhill. Not that's well, that's just the new east Shannon Ridge. Of, right, right, just east yeah. of Thornhill. Well, it's not even Shannon Ridge, but Clay well, Shannon exactly, is in charge of the right, development. Right. So we have uh, more of that. We were the biggest producer of wine before Prohibition in the whole state. And then Prohibition occurred, and we had to go to pears and walnuts and other things. So the use of land is really important. And what that goes back to small businesses, uh, whatever comes out of a warehouse, uh, where a warehouse should be and whatnot. And I think it's not wine and wine and wine and wine. It's, uh, I'll give you an example. We need some more restaurants in this county that attracts tourism and 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 we all love to go out to dinner especially on the highway 20 corridor exactly which everybody goes by exactly and as a matter of fact guy fury uh mm -hmm. of the TV yeah the show. diners show yeah, yeah he's very interested in starting a restaurant oh, that'd be in great. this county and he comes to lakeport a couple times a year or even more that's exciting. Um, he has his sights on something, a project here. Excellent. That's a good example. Another one is uh, buses that take mountain bikers up into the forest, and they don't have to ride up the hill. They just do downhill in the forest. <laughs> wait, wait, where's the fun so, in that? Isn't that cheating? Well, then the people that <laughs> really want to work out, there you go. they can ride up the hill. <clears throat> okay, so, so they wouldn't be prohibited to doing the uphill thing. Right, want. right. Okay. So I, as an example, I've, I've done the Downeyville Downhill, which is the most treacherous single track mountain bike course in the nation. And they have shuttles that take you up for a small fee, and you do this mountain biking down you know, the, from the top of the, the, the butte there. Um, another example is uh, mountain boarding. They have brakes. Uh, it's a really fun sport. I've tried it a few times. The shuttle's taking people up certain uh, roads that are conducive. They could even close it uh, to regular car traffic for the mountain bikers and the mountain boarders. Also, we have one of the best wildlife corridors in this county, mm. uh, east of the Oaks. And it's important for people to realize that the, the Sierra Club does have hikes uh, regularly, whether it's Knoxville or that corridor, and that involves the Snow Mountain Wilderness to Berryessa uh, project that's going on, and I hope that passes as well, because that's part of the attraction. And uh, Kanakti opening up is an impeccably important. It's got to open up again. We all miss our music. Well, we've heard the escrow's been delayed again because oh, of lack of financing. No financing. So. You're kidding me again? Nope. nope. 
That's killed but, it every time. Okay, the, the finances. Okay, exactly. the, here's, <clears throat> I'm, this is your show. Not We're not right. saying they're not coming <clears throat> up with it, but, but it's, the point out, is, it's extended. They basically. made certain overtures that they had financing in place. At least that's my understanding. Right. And when we knew they went past the original escrow in December, then March went by, et cetera, et cetera, we made some phone calls and found out that um, they, they're, they're not going for loans. They're going for investments. So they're doing either some type of, uh, not public offering, but, uh, God, my mind's not working today. Anyway, they're trying to bring in investors as a unit, and they're not getting being very successful at this point in time. So therefore, they do not have the sufficient funding available to move forward. So they keep on pushing back escrow. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. They're looking at about $15 million to give it a facelift. Something like that, yeah. And then they purchase price was about seven and a half to $8 million. So... Uh, I have an example. Uh, maybe the county should have purchased it instead of the top of Canocti, or if or, the county or owns it, it. Yeah, yeah. We'll go over that. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So the okay. county actually could uh, be a shining county uh, well, uh, board of supervisors if they were to purchase that. Could we? Way. Could we float a bond? We could do a bond measure. We could do. Uh, we could make the uh, state come in with funding and predicate it on if we get the resort running again, we have a higher need of funds to increase the health of our big lake here. Right. So you mix it together so it works and you integrate it so some people start listening and they go, oh, that sounds like a good idea because that thing needs to reopen you know, so, way yesterday. So if you get elected then? Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, we're not saying we want this to happen by any means, but right. if the financing doesn't go through and the, and the deal gets canceled, right. would you be willing to go to the rest of the board and start looking at some type of preliminary uh, draft of a, of a proposal to maybe float a bond or to actually try to figure out ways to get funding to buy the resort of sales? Absolutely. And then the citizens of this county could actually buy part of that and be investors within their own community. What we need is the 67,000 people in this county to be stakeholders in That's it. That's what I mean, yes. Because it provides jobs, I recreation, music. I mean, what's And hopefully profitability. Exactly. Exactly. That's that's the bottom line, and too. You know, because we're losing, what, three hundred to 400000 a year on the TOT absolutely. from that absence. Right. So it's a huge gaping hole that has to be be cured immediately. Okay. Do we have any callers? Not yet, okay. but let me just squeeze this in since we're on the, t the subject of tourism and hotels and resorts. Yes. What about, what are your feelings about the uh, Marymount project? That, thank you. That was, <coughs> oh, go for it. I've been going to almost all the Board of Supervisors meetings since the feds shut down the government October 1st. That was when I signed up and started really going to meetings aggressively. And what I've seen is the bid proposal changes on the elevator and this and that and the other thing. And uh, it's a, uh, I really looking back in hindsight, I don't think the it should have gone really through because it's a limited number of students as well. We have a wonderful Yuba campus and educators. We have a wonderful Mendo campus and educators. Uh, I think bucks should have been thrown more at those two campuses than... Uh, well, I don't think it was about that. It was about what were they <coughs> going to do with that building. Yeah, they and had to take it back. They had to take so. it back, so they had to put the money into it, and I think the county's f thoughts were, let a school take it over for now if it doesn't work out down the road we're putting in all the improvements it'll still be our building at the end of the road we'll have all the improvements done then if right. we want to do a resort or something else that may be more lucrative we can do that right. so that's the impression uh, that we, we got in speaking right and I have, a, I have a specific question I don't know if you can really answer it well, with can we go back one second yeah go ahead go cool. um, I think they could have utilized that campus better or that hotel better. One of my visions for that place was, before they made it into the, the college, was a youth senior center where the seniors uh, are teaching youth their knowledge, mm -hmm. and then they get to hang out with the youth mm -hmm. on projects because uh, the youth keep them alive longer. It's like uh, seniors with dogs Yeah, that's a or, great or pets, idea, and you know? that's something that actually could be implemented with the current senior centers that exist exactly. in your district. Right. And you've got some good ones there. We so do, we do. I could see that being a reality, and that would be a great project to work on. Well, I've been on things like that, and it, it's unbelievable. But that building is much bigger for something. It, it needs to be used for a real or a multiple uh, money-making uh, type of organization. Right. A non-profit thing just wouldn't be right. practical with all the money right. has to be in, oh, invested. Like a, 
uh, a junior achievement kind of thing. The seniors mm -hmm. are showing their skills, and then the, the youths sure. are putting out a project, uh, excuse me, a product, and they're selling it. Right. So uh, implement it better. Mm -hmm. and, they're, and they the definitely can use it better. Yeah, yeah it, and mm -hmm. it's fabulous to see youth and seniors working together. It's just awesome what occurs. If it's done right, they're both so engaged, you can't even step in the midst of them because they're doing something cool and and going in the right direction. Okay. So. Unfortunately, we can't do much about that now. Right. Okay, so we're, de we're dealing with a, a very favorable lease towards Marymount for the mm -hmm. moment. Right. Um, the, with the county, meaning our money folks, we spent over $5.2, $5.3 million in growing, and we're not getting any return on our investment for the moment. Correct. Now, and not, There's no ROI right, yet. But I'm not being critical because we had a nice chat with staff who are charged this project, and we understand their point of view, and yes. so it's, it's, there's yes. other information back. But here's my problem. Mm -hmm. And again, if you are elected, and you get to be sitting on that board, we as media contacted Marymount College. Mm -hmm. Have I been stonewalled? Yes. Okay. <laughs> now let me say, Marymount is a non-profit religious organization. Correct. Their financial statements are of public knowledge upon request. Right. They have a sweetheart deal for the first it's five private. years. Yes. They have a sweetheart deal for the first five years with this county. Mm -hmm. We as citizens and us as media represent the county. Right. When I started asking very basic fundamental questions, mm -hmm. I was told, I'm sorry, we can't share that information. Right. So my, and I'm not going to get into detail because this is your show. Right. So if I can, if you get elected, and I convey some of this information uh, uh, to you. Would you be willing to see, talk to the rest of the board, or and get more of a communication flow going from Marymount, where we can get a factual basis? I want to know how many students are being enrolled, how many employees are you hiring right now, what are you mandated to hire, what are you doing? All well, the answers what were, we understand, and what students are you attracting? Exactly. What's your core <laughs> of students that you want into? From your what we program? have been told, it is very minimal, like in the single digits. Yes. Oh, absolutely. For students, and, but they don't officially start until August. Right. So we can't really say anything until then when we see what enrollment no track record. enrollment. Yeah. Right. Well, the point is they're, they're being very secretive. That's they that's shouldn't my point. be that way, yeah. Well, to answer your question, Peter, um, as candidates and ballot measure, uh, you have to f for, uh, file with the Registrar of Voters Office all these forms that says how much money, where to go, how'd you get it, what not. That's called transparency. Right. So I believe in that. So therefore, if uh, whether they're a private educational institution or not, I think the people of the county, where they have a college in the midst of, it should be transparent, and your question should be answered. Yeah. Because with the most input and the most knowledge, that's how we make better decisions. Especially when we're footing the bill. Thank you. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. That's I, what I, I just I don't, don't like poke the taxpayer, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden yeah. it's uh, it, we could get into the church and state thing also. So oh, true. That's, yeah. Okay, that brings me to another question. Right. How would you define your political viewpoints, and what party do you represent, if any? Oh, I've been all over the board on parties. <laughs> I'm, I'm not about uh, party. I'm about um, doing the research and going with the gut and going with the heart, going with the brain, and then make the decision in which way to go. Who so, do you most identify with? Uh, I voted for our President of the United States the last two times. I voted for De Denise Rushing the last two times, Democrat. Um, I vote mainly Democrat. Um, have semblances of libertarianism. I have semblances of republicanism, uh, for sure. I was brought up uh, with very devout Republican parents and uh, grandparents, uh, so it's I have that connection too. So it's but you've registered under quite a, several different political parties, right? Correct? Right. Um, so and you know people want to throw the the shoe at me. Uh, yeah, I've seen a few thrown. Yeah, already. and it's ridiculous. It's a waste of time. It's who's this guy really gonna? Who's he's about? And how's he? Is he on the right direction for the most people? And that's where we go. The man of the right. people. I'm. Yeah. It's not. Uh, I want to be their voice because that's what I do good. Tell me what you got. And my family gets kind of perturbed at me. They know when I start engaging with someone, uh, their concern or question, I'm going to be there for two hours. <laughs> and when I'm walking my dog, um, my dog even knows, oh boy, here we go again. He's going to engage this person and get everything he needs to know out of him. And I look down and my dog's asleep. She's, <laughs> she's not yanking at the okay, chain. The most so important, she's used to it. The most important <laughs> yeah. question, what type of dog? <laughs> Rottweiler. 
Oh, nice. All right. Oh, cool. a thumbs up from Peter. We're, oh, bi- we're big dogs. I love big dogs. Sorry. <laughs> we love all dogs. Uh, we, we love dogs more that don't really bark when they shouldn't. Yeah, it's see, I don't like the deal. little yappy yeah. dogs. Yeah, like yeah, no, 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 no. But I love no. all animals anyway. Yeah, I, we're, I, we're I wouldn't absolutely. reject any of them, but no. you know, big dogs I like. Okay, best. let's get on to the two most important questions that face, well, we've already answered one of the three most important. That's the jobs and the economy. Yes. But Measure N, where you stand. Uh, it was not crafted properly. I'm voting against it. Okay. And it has no mention of... Uh, Generating money for the infrastructures of the county and on and on and on. Um, I've stated regularly that the 20 acre minimum zoned agricultural would diminish our agricultural because uh, uh, marijuana, cannabis is not a food or fiber. Hemp is a fiber. So, uh, well, cannabis plant is hemp. It's just a different name for a different variety, right. but it's still fibrous. And it so actually, fibrous. we should be. Recycling that, making that either exactly. paper, or clothing, it's usable. food, right? Not food, but fuel, right? Yeah. So um, I think even the people that are uh, older generations are realizing that it's probably the, one of the safest medicines on the planet. And I've always said, uh, would you rather have someone on the road behind a motor vehicle, uh, drunk or stoned? I mean, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. Or uh, angry is very, very dangerous also. Well, operating that. <laughs> road rage? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So, uh, and I'll tell you what. I've said this also in many debates and forums. It's not crafted for the future, the possible legalization right. of marijuana in our state. So uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, good things in it, but uh, it's not shiny and correct. And I think that, uh, like out of us six candidates, I think only one's for it uh, in our realm. But, uh, uh, two, as far as I know, besides you, but that's okay. Uh, okay. Anyway, um, yesterday I had a meeting with somebody uh, in Sacramento. Yes. And uh, very knowledgeable about the legislature, uh, whatever they call it in the state, yeah. government. And uh, he knows personally the number one attorney who is drafting legislation, even though there's a lot of different bills up there. And he, he's very, very, very confident because of the people behind it that by 2016, uh, marijuana, cannabis at all in this state will be fully legal. And, and when you say number one attorney, pro or against? Pro. Pro. Okay. Yes. So. And your meeting went very well. I hope. Well, no, that yeah, kind of yes, it did. Thank okay, you. Yeah. Good. So my my question here is: Do you support legalization? <sighs> legalization with parameters in which to benefit the most people and protect people that have issues with it or health problems or asthma. We backed, we're back to the same thing. Right. The most for the best, well, you know, the best for the most. It's hard to regulate that type of thing sometimes. Very, I, very unfortunately, you know, sometimes we've got to look at ourselves and say, hey, you know, we are human beings, and, you know, maybe we just need to show a little bit more respect to our neighbors or people surrounding us. Yes. Like, you know, when people used to, when smoking was the big rage, I've never smoked in my life, but people would surround me, I'm like, dude, can you, do you mind? Some were very polite and respectful. Others right. just looked at me like, and your point is? So I think that has the same thing in that regard. That's an excellent point. It's, you have to respect your neighbors and get along with your neighbors. You have to open a door for the ladies. You have to be cognizant of what goes on around you and help people. Um, one of the candidates uh, was parked in the red zone when I was getting an award Wednesday. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so is that being cognizant? Do you want to name names? Uh, Never mind. <laughs> I'll just figure joking. it out. He yeah. signed my award. <laughs> okay, I'll go on your website and look at it. Uh, there you go. It's <laughs> on there. Did I just say that? My <laughs> award is on my website. <laughs> but no names. Oh, you guys are yeah. funny. Uh, so it's, it's, hey, you have to think and you have to be cognizant of what's going on around you and you have to it, be considerate it, it, and to human beings it, and animals and everything. Right, and all kidding aside and laughing yeah. is that. The biggest problem I have, and I understand being a non-smoker and a non-participant. What? I'm just sending hand signals. Oh, okay. Guys, go on, do it. You're Thank doing. you. Is that yeah. <laughs> fifteen yard penalty? I'm oh, sorry. Um, uh, is five yard penalty? You know, I understand where some people in lo- in where residential areas. Yes. Better choice of words. You know, dude, I don't like the barbecue smoke coming into my backyard. Or can you kids quiet down a bit? They're yelling at right. midnight. Or 
dude, I smell your plants. Can you do something about it? I think the whole point is you cannot regulate human nature. Mm -hmm. Okay. You are who you are. And if you've been raised properly, you're going to have respect towards your neighbors. If you have been raised properly, you're not going to give a darn. And I think that's where the problem is. It's not th not that the cannabis is a bad product and that it should be completely banned. I think it believes that neighbors should get along with neighbors and work together to say, how can we resolve well, this, this issue? Well, this is my problem. Why does it have to come to the point where we have to have the government Thank to you. tell us how to do this? Whatever happened to respecting your neighbor, caring about what they're having to deal with and understanding their problems? I think that there's a lot of insensitive people out right. there that have taken advantage of the situation. I totally agree, and I call it Step one in, yeah. in my life, before you light up that cigarette, before you start yeah. digging a trench, before you affecting. cut someone off on the road or tailgate them, do step one. Think about your effect on them. And if everyone practiced this more, yeah. we would have okay. a better place. I'm, I'm going to set you up for this one now. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Don't you think that attitude is what should happen in government completely? Thank you. I told, Every you, day. I told you it's going to set you up. Every second. <laughs> so if you take that approach... It's when called listen to the people, then do your research, then implement. It has to be in that direction. You have to... Uh, that's part of the step one, too. Right. Okay. Nine, ten minutes left. Measure... L. Mm -hmm. We were talking about that briefly before we went on air. Right. Uh, we know what's going down today, this morning, right now yes. at Clear Lake. Yes. What, obviously, while well, you tell the folks listening, what is your position on it, Measure L? I've gone to, I think, I've gone to every single one of the forums and meetings and debates, except the one at the Board of Supervisors uh, recently on that. So I went to Alpine Senior Center. I went to, uh, the last one I went to was Sunday, the Green Party, where Mr. Dunlap uh, spoke and Sarah of the Big Valley oh. Rancheria spoke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and I, I meet with these people pro and against. Um, we have uh, people supporting it. Um, $113,000 was donated by the uh, National Association of Realtors. Absolutely. And $13,000 uh, from uh, local and people. And who were they donated to? Uh, <laughs> what side? Yes. Thank you. Yes. So, um, sorry all my friends, including Harry, Dr. Harry Lyons and whatnot. Uh, I'm a no on N, uh, excuse me, a no on L, because of the following. The elements needed with all the agencies. So let's put it this way. Uh, we've talked about Vector. We talked about Department of uh, Health Services, State of California. We've talked about Regional Water Quality Control. We've talked about Fish and Wildlife. I have been engaged with all these people representing these agencies, and they are saying, okay, in order for this measure to work, it would have to be, these agencies have to be set up, as an example, the Clear Lake Advisory Committee is on the ballot measure, but it has been dissolved. So that's one of my points right there. And then, I stated on Glenn's show two days ago, I've done a lot of fundraisers for schools and other entities, 4-H and Kiwanis, and I mean, Kiwanis is super psycho on fundraisers. Too bad we don't have the club in Clear Lake anymore. But the analogy is this. Do we stab the person buying a product in this county by a half penny tax where we can stab the state or fed? So the Army Corps is on the hook for up to 65%. The state needs to step in as well. And when you, if you're having a bake sale at the school, the students are buying those. The students are getting stabbed to, for those fundraising dollars. Doesn't make sense to me. We, it's better when you approach the businesses in the county for a fundraiser for a school or grandparents or family members who can afford to kick in the money. You don't go after the locals on a tax measure. It just doesn't make sense to me. I, I think a dedicated group of people, and they do exist in this county, 
um, can approach this without a ballot measure, and it failed by 840 votes when it was Measure E two years mm -hmm. ago. Um, I don't want to. Uh, we've done the dog and pony shows and the campaigning and whatnot, and and here we go. I, I it might pass this time. Well, I it, support the vector control concept, where there's a million dollars sitting in that a account that hasn't been spent that could be spent towards either the quagga mussel or the algae control. That's one issue. Then there's other monies that are available through other like water resources. They have funding coming in. Why isn't some of that money being directed? But if they put together all these other resources they have, we wouldn't need to have to pay the tax. Right, right. I work closely with Jamesina Scott, PhD entomologist of vector control. Mm -hmm. And we talk about this often. Mm -hmm. And she is uh, does not really want to focus funds on on uh, things like that. She's that's the problem. It, it does not, uh, and I'll tell you why. I, I I don't know exactly. I'm going to theorize here a little bit. Her thrust is preventing uh, pathogens and diseases that are transmitted mm -hmm. by mosquitoes <coughs> and airborne pests. Now, if we were to get, uh, say, the Department of California. California Department of Health Services more involved in, in with their checkbook and preventing, uh, like Austin Park, you can't go swimming uh, in Austin Park Beach at the end of summer because they have the signs up. We right. have cyanobacteria and whatnot. That's that's a bummer for our kids and everyone who wants to kayak or go swimming. So it, it's um, pros and cons on that, Terry, uh, with the vector. Um, I, I think it's more of a airborne uh, pathogens and whatnot from those kind of uh, insects but and whatnot. The thing is that that cyanobacteria, it can be airborne, it can be, you know, there's it so is many, airborne yeah, also. So there's Absolutely. so many different aspects that they could make it fit if they wanted to. I just right. feel like they don't want to. Um, it's time that I talk more closely with her um, mm -hmm. on that right. because she she's so knowledgeable and really concerned. Her heart is into protecting the public right. and that is her duty and she does a fabulous job. Um, like when I moved to Spring Valley 10 years ago, uh, I was almost itching my skin off from these pests, and she stepped in with the help of uh, us and our advisory board and whatnot. We addressed this, and they're attacking it, and they're doing a really good job. So right. I know that she wants the right thing to occur, right. and if it's possible to throw any of that money towards improving the health of our lake, um, uh, we need to okay. engage her on that. Okay, so we got just yeah, we're a few just minutes out left. Of time so. Almost. Um, quick response, what's your view of the oversight committee within the, in the measure? Um, if you count on the measure, it equals 11 entities, exactly. Now, one of those entities is dissolved, the Clear Lake Advisory Committee. Right. <laughs> so it has 10 entities on the oversight committee. Yeah. So here we go. And also, uh, I am told, I asked both Mike Dunlap and I asked uh, Sarah uh, Sunday, is this true? Just like I was appointed by the Board of Supervisors to serve on the uh, our advisory board for CSA2, is this the same way? You submit an application to the Board of Supervisors and they appoint you or not, and they both said, yes, that's supposedly the way this is going to work. Okay, I'm sorry, but we're out of time and we've right. got two calls that just came in. Thanks, guys, cool. for waiting until the last minute. Hello, you're on the air. Hi. Um, I would like to know why they just don't dredge the south end or east end of the lake and so that... Um, well, what would happen is the dredging would kick up all that mercury that's in the silt and send it downstream, and we are the source for all water that's south of us into the Bay Area. So that's it would under be a pretty, pretty bad thing. Yeah. They'd have to have a filtration system set up at Cache Creek. It's, it's really complicated. It could be done, and it is a valid option, but it's a lot of money and a lot of time. It involves a stormwater protection yeah. permit and whatnot. Yeah, it's a big thing. But thank you, caller. Hello, you're on the air. Oh, hi. I just want to mention something, just an idea about this uh, oh, shoot. phrase for the lake. Uh, how about uh, the idea of these fishing tournaments that happen? Those are all sponsored by very big time, you know, corporate people and stuff, and they love to come here. Uh, maybe talking to those people can help raising the fishing kitchens the money that they're using the lake uh, for their tournaments. Yeah, that's definitely something that could be thought of. Mark, you have any response to that? Thank yes, you, caller. We're going to put you off the air. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank Engaging any entity to bring funding 
to increase this natural jewel we have uh, in any variety. Even getting foreign resource funding uh, over the years has been uh, attempts to the county to harvest evasive species and aquatic plants for fertilizer or food for livestock. Um, what happened to all that? Ooh, and it's, uh, it's a barter system. Um, on several projects I've done and, and I'm doing, I believe in bartering. So you bring the entity in, do the work, and we're not gonna charge you any money. We're not gonna make you have a permit. Get the job done. Go make your profit on the commodity. Get it out of our lake. Um, uh, I ha like Mendocino Lake that recently was, you know, all that silt is sitting in it. That's, that's another <laughs> lake, you know. Yeah. Dig it out. Yeah, you have to get it healthy good. again. Well, I hate to say it, but we are out of time. Thank you oh, so darn. much for joining us. It I was hope a pleasure. you had a good time. We certainly did. I had a wonderful time. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> now off to LAFCO. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah, and uh, if you make it through to the through the primary, we'll see you afterwards. We'll be happy to have you back on. Awesome. Okay, thanks Appreciate so much, it. Mark. Mark thank, Courier, thank you, Mark. candidate for District 3 Supervisor. Thanks so much. All right, you're listening to KPFZ 88.1 FM in Lake County and all around the lake. We'll be back in about five minutes or so with candidate for assembly, uh, Bill Dodd.